Shane, thanks for being with us. Let's start with this. Could you explain the T formation and the personnel that Penn State uses in this formation? Um, T formation, self-explanatory, um, kind of in the shape of a T. So you'll have two inline tight ends. They're going to be in three-point stances on the line of scrimmage. And then you're going to have three backs. Um, you're going to have one behind the left guard, one behind the quarterback or the center, um, and then the other one uh, behind the right guard. You know, a lot of teams use 32 personnel, which is three running backs and two tight ends. Um, obviously, with Penn State's personnel, they have a little bit more of an interchangeable uh, kind of thing going on with uh, with their tight ends. So uh, Brenton Strange, number 86, kind of doubles as their fullback. He's lined up directly behind the quarterback and kind of acts as that lead blocker or, you know, fullback in their T package. Something I've always kind of applauded Coach Ursich on is his ability to play to his team's strengths. Um, he did it when he was the OC at Oklahoma State, um, when he was helping out uh, at Ohio State. He's always kind of found uh, the best ways to get his best players on the field at all times. Um, so obviously Penn State had a very strong tight end room. Uh, they call themselves the Aces. And then the Lawn Boys, uh, as Coach Sider refers to, his running back room. So yeah, any way you can find a way to get you know all those guys on the field at once, you know, that's that's kind of doing your job as an OC. And now in your article, you talked about the fact that this is symmetrical. The two tight ends along the line of scrimmage, two running backs, the fullback or Brenton Strange, the tight end directly behind the quarterback. It creates a symmetrical formation. How does that create an advantage for Penn State? So as a defense now, if you don't line up exactly symmetrical as the offense is, Mathematics show that, you know, you have a, an advantage to either the left or the right side. Does it always work out that way? Mm, not not necessarily, or else, you know, every play would be a touchdown. But obviously, you know, when you have a numerical advantage to, you know, either the left or the right side, you have, a you know, an advantage before the ball's even snapped. So when we see Penn State go to the line of scrimmage and the quarterback decides to look back at the coaching staff They're trying to determine if there is that advantage personnel-wise one way or the other. So does this mean going to the line of scrimmage, they don't know which side, Penn State, the offense doesn't know which side they're going to run to. The defense dictates which way they run. Yeah, so, you know, obviously none of us know uh, for, you know, 100% certainty uh, whether that's the case without being in the meeting room every day with Coach Yersich. Um, we can make some pretty strong uh, assumptions that that is the case. Um, you know, you see, you see Clifford, you know, will take a peek to the sideline. Um, and I'm sure they have a code word at the line of scrimmage, you know, signaling, signaling whether we're running left or right. Um, you know, like you said, dictated off of how the defense is lined up. Now, we have a smart guy on the offense, Mike Yursich. Unfortunately, there's pretty smart defensive coordinators also who study film, watch what's going on. The defense counteracts, they expect the ball to be run like the blast or off tackle or the quarterback sneak. I'm sure the defense is now starting to compensate by putting big bodies up against that. Well, then Penn State had an answer for that then also, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. So I touched on it a minute ago. Um, Penn State's tight ends and running backs really have the ability to play multiple positions. Uh, they're, they're football players. They're great athletes. If defensive coordinators want to now sub in, you know, they're, they're 300 pounders, that's fine, but they better be prepared to play in space. I'll touch on the quads bunch first. You saw this, I believe, first against Ohio State um, where they motioned uh, three running backs uh, and a tight end out into a bunch formation to the left. Um, and you saw Ohio State had no idea what to do because – you know, the, the defensive linemen that were subbed in, they don't know the coverage checks. You know, they weren't in the in the defensive back meetings all week. So, you know, they're kind of looking around like, oh, boy, what do we do? So at the end of the day, it's forcing defenses to communicate. Um, and it's just another thing they have to prepare for every week. And the first thing you noticed, and you highlighted this in your article, is you mentioned the confusion that Ohio State had. They ended up having to call a timeout because they were unprepared for this. And then several games later, when it's already out there, you saw Michigan State was so confused by it. They had three guys trying to do coverage for four guys in the quad bunch, and it created a total mismatch. Yes, we've we've talked a lot about math (laughs) on this session. And 
Uh, I think that goes to show you something about football. I mean, it's simple math at the end of the day. When you uh, when you're running quads, you know, when you're in a bunch formation like that, and you have four eligible receivers against three defenders, you have a mathematical advantage. You know, you have three blockers for those three, and you have a ball carrier. So he wouldn't. He doesn't even have to make anyone miss. As long as everyone does their job uh, and gets their block, he should walk into the end zone. And then you want to get four out uh, over the quads. Well, then there's probably single coverage with uh, with Tyler Warren on the other side of the field. Um, and you saw him convert a big fourth down uh, against Ohio State from that. So, you know, as we've talked about it, it's simple math. 